Yep. Yep. All right, then. And we're off to the races. I think. Hang on a second. So damn many moving parts here. All right. Welcome All to Academic us. Challenge. What? All except us. Okay. <laughs> Let me start that again. <laughs> Uh, for crying out loud. Magic of tape. Here we go. Welcome to Academic Challenge. My name is Jim Gifford, your host and moderator, and today we feature teams from Coloma High School and Bangor High School. WSM's Academic Challenge features scholastic competition involving high schools from Berrien and Van Buren counties, and it's sponsored by Waterville Lake Public Schools, Lake Michigan College, Lakeshore Public Schools, and by Chemical Bank. Let's meet the teams first, and we'll start from... Well, let's start with Coloma. I'm acting captain Cole Hamilton, sophomore. Barry Coleman, senior. Carly Lentz, junior. Brandon Peake, senior. And Corey, your captain, or your coach, rather. Uh, Mr. Shan and Miss Glisson. Ta-da. And from Bangor. Uh, Zeppelin Torres, captain, senior. Madison Kozel, junior. Anders Mortensen, sophomore. Michaela Lake, junior. And Zeppelin, your coach. Uh, Mr. Devers. Uh, duh. All right. Let's uh, get started here. The basic rules. First and second halves. We announce the value of each question before it's asked. You have 10 seconds to answer. 15 if it's a math question. When you press your button, please wait to be recognized. There is no consultation allowed. There will be during the 60-second round at halftime. Uh, I'll be your scorekeeper and judge, and uh, Bill Klein will be our co-judge, and we'll be asking the questions today. And if we are ready... Bill, whenever you are ready. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. For five points, define and spell enigma. Uh, Billy Coloma. Enigma, E N I G M A, and an enigma is something profound. Um, huh, I can't really define it. <laughs> uh. A uh, substantial event. <laughs> I think we missed on that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's an incorrect answer. Okay, uh, Bangor, you got uh, five seconds to try to define enigma. Anders, um, E N I G M A, and it's like something mysterious and hard to figure out. That is a correct oh, answer. Yeah. It's a oh, mystery. So or speaking in riddles, perplexing statements. For 15 points, metamorphosis means going through several distinct stages in insect development. The process is controlled by hormones. What class of vertebrae animals also has members that go through this process? Corey, Coloma? Mammals. Uh, incorrect answer. Bangor, five seconds. And that's time. <laughs> wow. Well, <laughs> it's an amphibian. For 10 points, it is not exact enough to be used much in science and is more commonly used metaphorically in politics as a test of ideological purity. What's the expression? Billy, Coloma? Political spectrum. Uh, incorrect answer. Bangor, five seconds. A litmus test. For 20 points, name the contemporary American artist whose imaginative masterpiece is appropriately entitled, I Saw the Figure Five in Gold. Zeppelin, Bangor. Andy Warhol. Uh, incorrect. Coloma, five seconds. Time? Oh, gee. Charles DeMuth. Oh, I haven't heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> Should have painted six. Uh, for ten points, identify the largest minority group in Kyrgyzstan. Corey, Coloma. I'm um, Kurds. Uh, incorrect answer. Bangor, five seconds. 
Zeppelin? Caucasians. <laughs> uh, incorrect. It's the Russians. For 15 points, most of the book of Daniel takes place in which ancient kingdom? Corey? Coloma? It, um, Israel. Uh, incorrect answer. Bangor. Five seconds. Zeppelin? Babylonia. That is the correct answer for 15 points. For 10 points, only one record has ever been number one on the pop, soul, and country charts, charts in the same week. The year was 1956. The singer was Elvis Presley. Name the song. Corey Coloma, Jailhouse Rock. Uh, incorrect. Bangor, five seconds. Zeppelin, Hound Dog. Correct answer for 10 points. Mm. This is a uh, multiple choice for five points. When Galileo upheld Copernicus's theory that the Earth moves around the sun <coughs> rather than vice versa, the Inquisition brought him to trial and asked him to recant. Did he recant? Refuse to recant, accept exile while remaining silent. Corey Coloma. He fully recanted. That's a correct for five points. For 15 points, in which language was the plague penned? Billy Coloma. Latin. Uh, incorrect answer. Bangor, five seconds. Time? It was in French. For 15 points, the only violation of the Monroe Doctrine during its first 50 years of existence occurred when what nation promoted a puppet regime, regime, promoted a puppet regime in Mexico under the nominal rule of Emperor Maximilian? Uh, Carly, Coloma. Germany. Uh, incorrect answer. Bangor, five seconds. Zeppelin. Italy. Uh, incorrect answer. It was France. For five points, differentiate between organic and inorganic chemistry. Billy, Coloma. Organic chemistry involves carbon-based um, forms and inorganic chemistry is not carbon based. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's good. Okay, yeah, correct answer for five. That's five points for Kiloma. Okay. For 15 points, Tel Aviv and Jerusalem are the largest cities in Israel. What is the third largest? Zeppelin, Bangor? Bethlehem. Uh, incorrect answer. Coloma, five seconds. <coughs> Corey? Haifa. That is a correct answer for 15 points. Sorry. Uh, for five points, this term for a part that closes off a test tube can also mean a baseball team's most reliable pitcher. What's the word? Billy, Coloma. Pinch. Uh, incorrect answer. Bangor, five seconds. Time. It's a stopper. For five points, what <laughs> SI temperature unit uses both the triple point of water and absolute zero in its definition? Corey, Coloma. Calvin's. That's a correct answer for five points. For five points, they heard a loud harumph and a bang. An oxygen tank in the service module had exploded, causing a second tank to rupture. No oxygen meant no electricity, and no electricity meant the rocket motor couldn't fire. This passage described, describes what lunar mission? Zeppelin, Bangor. Apollo 13. That is a correct answer for five points. For 15 points. William Faulkner created Yoknatawapa <laughs> County. Mm -hmm. 
What British novelist created a fictional county of Wessex? Time. Thomas Hardy. For 20 points, this is a math question. The interest on a three-month loan of $80 is 90 cents. What is the annual percentage rate of interest? And that's time. That's four and a half percent. For five points, what computer language bears the name of a 17th century French mathematician? Time. Pascal. This next question will be the final question of the first half. It's for five points. To show you're academically minded, spell academically. Billy Coloma. Academically, A C A D E M I C A L L Y. That is correct for five points. Five points, and that wraps up the first half of today's academic challenge. We'll be back with a score and the 60-second round after this on WSJM, the news and talk of Michigan's great Southwest. I have not gotten a single geography question wrong in trivia craft. <laughs> <laughs> what are the categories, Bill? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Make one for us. Usually, like, <laughs> in between. Uh, I usually do good in uh, geography and history. Yeah. Yeah. Like poets? My best are art, um, art, in history. Oh my! I was ha I was having a competition with my friends, and we were just going back and forth, and then the art questions would just stop. Presidential just so do you guys ever have like a moment where you keep getting crowns? Oh, no, uh, no, but I've had that done to me I was, twice. I was so mad because I got a single history thing and then I got an art question wrong and he just never got an art question in the one art question and he just <laughs> blew him out. I love it when that happens. But so far, I love it when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> when <I> get <laughs> a single art and then I blew him out the next game <laughs> without him getting a single sticker. So I get my revenge. We're four and two right now. Intense right away. I'll let you flip it. Okay. Oh, 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 we'll <coughs> probably be uh, discussing this. Yes, yes. All right, so our three options are poets, last days, three and good. residential good. almond. That was quick. Ooh, right. wow. Hey, poets, cool. Poets, last names, oh, that's all, all. That means, like, where they went to college. Oh, yeah. All right, people. No, Everybody all ready? All my mates. All my mates. But, yeah. Let's bring it back. All right. Uh, uh, hang on a second. Okay, here we go. At the end of the first half, the score is Coloma, 35, Bangor, 35. <laughs> and we move on to the 60-second round. Teams, you'll have three categories to choose from. We'll give you 60 seconds to answer as many of the 10 as you can. Each is worth 10 points. There's a 20-point bonus if you answer all 10 within the time limit. You are encouraged to consult with one another at this point. The answers must come from the team captain. You may pass and should pass if you don't know. So you don't eat up your 60 seconds. After the minute is up, the opposing team will have a chance to answer any questions the first team could not answer or did not get to. Since we are tied, we are going to flip a coin to see who chooses first. So, Viking boy, if you'll call it in the air. Yeah, we'll have the Viking. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. That's it is tails. It is right. tails. Coloma, you get first choice. And your choices are poets, last names, and presidents, presidential alma maters. What is your choice, please? We elect to pick last names. Going with last names. So we'll put 60 seconds on the clock. Does this need a setup, Bill? Uh, no, I don't think so. All right. There's uh, nothing here anyway. Right. <laughs> so. Bill, so and, uh, <laughs> the clock starts when you start asking. In 1950, a man named Arthur established a television rating system. What was Arthur's last name? Nielsen? Correct. In 1956, Henry and Richard decided to establish a company to help people with their income taxes. What company did they found? 
um, H&R Block? Correct. In 1904, two British gentlemen, Charles and Frederick, founded an auto manufacturing company that still produces fine cars today. What car? Pass. Name either of the candy makers who are re represented by one of their candies, M&Ms. Mars. Correct answer. A man named Milton introduced this milk chocolate bar in 1895, naming it for himself. What was his famous last name? Um, Hershey. Correct. John founded an auto rental company in 1923, which he originally named the Drive Yourself System. Give John's famous last name. Dear. I'm sorry? Dear. Uh, incorrect. Four correct for Coloma in the first round here of the 62nd round for a total of 40 points. And we'll turn it over to uh, Bangor now for those missed, those we didn't get to, and we'll put 60 seconds on the clock here as well. Are you ready? Okay. In 1904, two British gentlemen, Charles and Frederick, founded an auto manufacturing company that still produces fine cars today. What car? Dodge. Uh, incorrect. It's Rolls-Royce. Uh, John founded an auto rental company in 1923, which he originally named the Drive Yourself System. Give John's famous last name. Don't know. No guess? No guess. Okay. It's Hertz. Uh, Turn-of-the-century piano salesman Mark Honk led his name to what style of piano music? Uh, no guess. Honky Tonk. In 1948, Burton and Irving founded an ice cream store chain. What were their last names? Ben and Jerry's. Uh, incorrect. Baskin Robbins. In 1818, brothers Henry and Daniel opened a men's clothing store in Manhattan. What were their last names? No guess. Brooks. And Bangor Brooks gets Brothers. skunked this time around for zero points. But we stay with Bangor because they have their choice of the two remaining uh, categories, uh, which are poets and presidential alma maters. And what are you going to go with, Bangor? Uh, presidential alma maters. Uh, right then. No poets in the group, huh? All right. All right. All right, uh, I'm going to give you the school and the year of this person's graduation, and you tell me the president. And whenever you're ready. U.S. Military Academy, 1843. Grant. Correct. Whittier, 1934, and Duke Law School, 1937. Nixon. Correct. Georgetown, 1968. Yale Law School, 1973. Bush. Incorrect. Michigan, 1935. Yale Law School, 1941. Pass. William and Mary, 1762. Jefferson. Correct. Annapolis, 1946. Pass. Oxford, 1970. Um, Clinton? That's correct. Four correct for Bangor for 40 points. And we'll turn uh, that category, the ones missed and the ones we didn't get to, back over to Coloma. And uh, 60 seconds goes back on the clock. And, Bill, whenever you okay. are ready. Again, I will give you the school and the year of graduation. Georgetown, 1968. Yale Law School, 1973. Um, pass. Uh, you can yeah, there's no passing in this oh. one. <laughs> um, Clinton. Oh, wait, no. That's correct. No. <laughs> uh, before you change your mind. Uh, next one's Ford. <laughs> I know that one. Just go to the next one. <laughs> Ford is correct. Uh, Annapolis, 1946. Um, 
Kennedy? Uh, incorrect. Jimmy Carter. Southwest Texas Teachers College, 1930. Bush? Incorrect. Lyndon Johnson. West Point, 1915. Eisenhower? That's correct. Yale, 1968. Obama? Yeah. No, wait, no, he was a Harvard guy. He was a Harvard guy. Oh, yeah, George Harvard. W. Bush. Oh. <laughs> All right, three correct for Coloma for a total of 30 more points. And that will wrap up the uh, 60-second round. We will uh, come back with the scores here shortly and uh, finish up with the second half on WSJM, the news and talk of Michigan's great Southwest. <laughs> <laughs> I, this is pretty close, eh? We probably would have asked yeah, for clarification. Is, uh, nice game. Or a last <laughs> name. Uh, where does that let you know, wear that? No, it's not tiny for me. I think it's definitely. But there, oh. uh, yeah. I, I've never seen a tie before. That was like. What happens if they tie at the end of the game? Sudden just, death and we yeah. keep yeah. going until wrestling. somebody gets a point. It's a wrestling match. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we should. Uh, yeah, yeah, you want to go against actually, the guy that just lifted 220 dead left. bring the guy in from Wild Clear and you do, do a cherry spit. Let's go. <laughs> Three, 20, squat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lewis. All right, then. Well, this is just zooming right along. Hey, let's go, Craig. All right. All right. What do we got here? Just one the substitution? Naomi, you're it? Okay. We'll get to you in a second. Okay. Uh, this is this is where we find out a little bit about your school, so we'll do that too. Everybody uh, ready? Yes. Here we go. The score at the end of the 62nd round: Coloma 105, Bangor 75. And it's time now to find out a little bit about what's happening at each of our participating schools. And from Bangor, here is Captain Zeppelin. Greetings from Bangor High School. We just survived a grueling week of finals after a week of, with four snow days. The second semester has begun and now everyone is getting used to their new schedules. This week everyone also participated in a compassion project, an anti-bullying program to promote diversity, tolerance, appreciation, and acceptance through a variety of games, team building activities, and presentations. Winter sports are in full spring full swing and a full week of Winterfest activities are scheduled beginning February 2nd. We'd like to recognize the competitive cheer team as being ranked in the top 10 in state and division four. Next Friday, January 30th will be a formal goodbye to our longtime principal and quiz bowl supporter, Mr. Melvin, who retired in August. Everyone is encouraged to come out to the game against Bloomingdale to honor his many years of service to Bangor and wear a silly tie like he always always does so well thanks to wsjm and all the sponsors of the academic challenge for giving us this opportunity zeppelin thank you kindly and from coloma Corey, the intelligent billy coleman will be reading this right today marked the first day of our new semester students were excited to try out their new schedules and get a fresh start with their academics tonight we have our bowling team competing in Otsego as well as our boys basketball teams the girls basketball games are playing at home tonight Good luck to all the fighting comments. District-wide, all students are enjoying a federal program known as Breakfast in the Classroom. This means that each and every day, students receive a free breakfast to start out their day. Everyone seems to be enjoying this perk. Next month, our drama club is presenting just another high school play on February 21st and 22nd in our new newly renovated auditorium. We hope to see lots of audience members showing up in support. We have an ACT prep class that will, be, that will begin in a couple of weeks for juniors and seniors wishing to achieve good scores on their ACT test. This class will run for four Monday nights in the month of February. Now we'd like to thank our gen generous sponsors, WSJM Radio Station, Chemical Bank, Lake Michigan College, the Water Elite Panthers, and Lakeshore Lancers. 
<laughs> All right, Billy, thank you kindly. One substitution for the second half of today's <laughs> match uh, from Coloma. Young lady, step up and identify yourself, please. Uh, Naomi Cottrell, and I'm a sophomore. Welcome to this uh, half of Academic Challenge. Let's begin the second half. And with that, the one and only Bill Klein. For 15 points, Inspector Clouseau is a character from the Pink Panther series. Who was Police Inspector Javert? Anders Bangor. Um, from Les Miserables. That's the correct answer for 15 points. For 10 points, arrange, you might want to get your pencils out here, arrange these five decisive battles in proper chronological order. Midway, Hastings, Waterloo, Marathon, Gettysburg. Chronological order. And that's time, uh, unfortunately. Geez, and I thought for sure that they'd know this because you were at the Waterloo. I was. <laughs> I, I knew the first one. I just it was Marathon, <laughs> Hastings, Waterloo, Gettysburg, and Midway. For 20 points, President Carter suffered from a painful ailment hemorrhoids <laughs> during his term as chief executive. He was treated by his physician, William Lukash of the United States Navy. Specify the doctor's rank. Billy Coloma. Surgeon General. Uh, incorrect. Bangor, five seconds. Zeppelin. Uh, commander. Uh, incorrect. He was a rear admiral. <laughs> <laughs> I, was about, I was about to say colonel. That's, 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 that's almost <laughs> pathetic. Yeah, they, they had to stretch for that one. Uh, rear admiral. For five points. In Barry Unsworth's novel, The Songs of the Kings, the Greek ship bound for which destination is trapped by unfavorable winds? Songs of the Kings. Time. Troy. For 20 points, Masada was an ancient Hebrew fortress that held out against the Romans in the first century A.D. What Jewish sect refused to succumb, succumb to the Romans' demand for surrender, committing mass suicide instead? Corey, Coloma. Uh, the old Israelites. Uh, incorrect answer. Bangor, five seconds. Zeppelin. The Jews. Uh, incorrect. It was the Zealots. Oh. For 15 points, this term for an administrative district in England has largely been replaced by the county. What's the word? Zeppelin, Bangor. Township? Incorrect. Coloma, five seconds. Corey? Um, Ward. Incorrect. It was the Shire. For five points, what structure connects the unborn child to the placenta of its mother? Corey, Coloma. Umbilica cord. That is correct answer for five That's points. <laughs> for ten points, on a graph... The given set of points x, y, where x is greater than zero and y is less than zero, will always be found where? Billy, Coloma. Quadrant four. That's a correct answer for ten points. You might want to get your pencils out for this one also. For five points, copyrights are generally given in Roman numerals. In what year would a copyright go into effect if its date were given as M C M L X X X V I I. Billy Coloma, nineteen thirty seven. Uh, incorrect. Bangor, anybody? Nope. 
1987. Mm. Close. I got the For 10 points, who mm. is the only poet to have won a Pulitzer Prize four times? The titles were New Hampshire, A Poem with Notes and Grace Notes, Collected Poems, A Further Range, and A Witness Tree. Zeppelin, Bangor. Robert Frost. That is a correct answer for 10 points. For five points, what took 33 hours, 30 minutes, 29.8 seconds in 1927? Zeppelin, Bangor. A boat ride. Uh, incorrect. Coloma, five seconds. Corey? Uh, the flight from New York to P Paris from that one guy. <laughs> <laughs> Not the other guy. That Not the other guy. guy. <laughs> the one guy. Uh, unfortunately, that's an incorrect <laughs> answer. The other guy was Lindbergh. So that, that, that's that guy. What it, yeah. For 20 points, these red flowers are grown domestically. Was that incorrect? That was incorrect, okay. yes. The other guy was not, they had to name <laughs> Lindbergh. Uh, for 20 points, these red flowers are grown domestically. But in the wild, they brighten the hillsides of the Appalachian Range before the trees come into leaf. A low bush, it is the state flower of West Virginia. Name it. Billy, Coloma? Poppy? Uh, incorrect. Bangor, five seconds. Zeppelin? A rose. Incorrect. It's a rhododendron. No. For 20 oh, points, in the Victorian age, they called it Neo-Malthusianism. Malthusianism. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. They couldn't pronounce I it back then either. either. Neo <laughs> That's why they changed it. Uh, what do we call the practice today? Because <laughs> we couldn't pronounce that. If it's neo um Corey, Coloma? Kinesiism. <laughs> uh, incorrect answer. <laughs> I think it's rhododendron. Uh, yeah. Bangor? Five seconds. Wow. Uh Zeppelin. Capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately that's an incorrect answer. It's birth control. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the yeah. economics part. Yeah. Rhododendron oh, was yeah. just as good. Yeah, it was <laughs> I thought you said Malthus, good. like Thomas Malthus. Yeah. Yeah. For 15 points, what British invention travels over land and water on a cushion of air? Carly, Coloma. Hot air balloon? Incorrect. Bangor, five seconds. Zeppelin? A Zeppelin. <laughs> uh, it's a hovercraft. Oh. <laughs> For five points, Shakespeare wrote The Merchant of Venice. Who wrote The Merchant's Tale? I'm just going to go with it. Corey, Coloma? Chris Christopher Marlowe. Incorrect. Bangor, five <laughs> seconds. Zeppelin? Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, incorrect. It was Chaucer. Chaucer's Tales. Uh, from five points, what would the word vivace mean in the field of musical notation? Billy Coloma. With grace. Incorrect. Bangor, five seconds. Time. Lively. For five points, which sport is governed by the Marquis de Queensberry's, Queensberry's rules? These rules were first used in America in 1892 when James Corbett faced and defeated John L. Sullivan. Corey Coloma. Tennis. Uh, incorrect. Bangor, five seconds. Zeppelin. We're going to go with polo. 
<laughs> boxing. Should have gone with boxing. <laughs> Next question will be the final question of the second half and oh, uh, also it's of the match. And it's a math question. Don't you just love them? Uh, For 20 points, the sides of a triangle are 13 inches, 13 inches, and 10 inches. Compute the altitude drawn to one of the equal sides. That appears to be time. Uh, no takers, Bill? No. Yep, it was 9 and 3 thirteenths. We didn't know no. that. <laughs> well, that does it, folks. That ends uh, the second half of today's academic challenge. And uh, by virtue of that, the match as well. We'll tabulate the scores and announce the winner after this on WSJM, the news and talk of Michigan's Great Southwest. Oh, my God, this is going to be extremely close. <laughs> this is like... Oh, what happened? That was a good match, guys. That was a good match. You guys did well. Like, was, this is a close match. This guy, you guys did well. I want to know. Frequently. Yeah, we don't even need to have you like this. I got scared. Oh, man. Can we do it? No, we just keep yeah. time. We're just here for like the next five hours. Like Neil Malthusian. Yeah, yeah it does. Uh, and I looked it up. I still had trouble pronouncing it. So. What? I'm surprised you got all those out. <laughs> See, exactly. <laughs> Devers, Anders was singing the same yeah. thing when I said Zeppelin. Yeah, I, I, I thought Hovercraft was oh like just way distant okay. future. I was going to say an airboat. Like those well, actually, swamp, like things. swamp things. Boats. Those swamp, swamp, yeah. yeah. The Navy and the Marine Corps are using yeah. hovercrafts today. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I was going to say they're replacing the Higgins boats. The Higgins boats, yeah. yeah. I was going to say steam engine for some reason. Because they're faster oh, no, and they're actually no, they, they're so, just a lot more durable. They just use a lot of hovercrafts. Thank you, Lewis. I just had them mixed up. I didn't know what it Because they can go over water in the air. Just get this All right, people, let's bring it back. Let's wrap it up. Wrap it up, wrap it up. Here we go. We are back on WSJM's Academic Challenge to announce today's winner and to thank our sponsors and the winners by a score of 120 to 100, the team from Coloma. Congratulations, Coloma. How about a nice hand for the Coloma Ice? We thank you all for joining us on WSJM's Academic Challenge, brought to you by Lakeshore Public Schools, Lake Michigan College, Waterville Public Schools, and by Chemical Bank. And we hope you join us again next time as St. Joe and Bangor go head-to-head -head on Academic Challenge. Cool. Ta -da. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Excellent job. A most spirited. Just forget about it. Now I see that face. You're playing... <laughs> Yeah, you're playing St. Joe. Just forget about it. Nah, man. We, you we, me, 